Hi, I'm Monica from Oma's Place. Have you been looking at our In The Who projects at Oma's Place? Here are just some of them. Here is a tote bag that's done partially in the hoop, or should I say mostly in the hoop, mug rugs, bibs, in, um, in the hoop, a smartphone case, and our sweet little dollies. There are pot holders and so many more in the hoop projects. Maybe you have been thinking those look way too complicated for me. And I just want you to know that you too can do all of those as long as you have the right size hoop. Um, I thought maybe what would help you is if I showed you how to make a mug work because mug works are a really good way to start on doing in the hoop projects. And all of our mug works follow a certain pattern um, in terms of construction of the mug work. So I thought it might be helpful if we showed you how to do that. I have asked my friend Esther to come and help me show you how to do this. And Esther is new to embroidery but not new to sewing and I have given Esther the handout or the printout of one of our mug works that you can have for free on, the, on our website under free designs and this mug work is, is the so thankful mug work now I have changed it just slightly by making it more springy instead of fall like and there's a little scroll and a little rosebud on the mug work but the basic construction of the mug work is the same so once we are done talking here you can then do this yourself okay this is esther and esther you read through the supply list and mm -hmm. through the whole write-up and what kind of questions did you have up front well first of all it's nine pages of instructions and that kind of overwhelms me. Well, I understand that can be very overwhelming you know and that's a that's a common criticism that people have oh my word 20 pages on the smartphone case there is no way I can do something like that. You know why that why there are so many pages because we put lots and lots of pictures in. Well yes I saw that. And you know the other thing I do I think of us older ladies doing this and the print is pretty large the lettering is pretty large because of that i know mm -hmm. that i have some visual issues and i'm always glad when it's not so small that i can barely read it so that all contributes to the fact that there are a lot of pages and you know i think photos are so important to know what you're doing and so i ask that you not be intimidated by a lot of pages i know that there are and after a while you will realize that okay the first part is always the same here I don't need to print this out again I'll just print the pages for cutting instructions um, and I think then the cost for you as far as paper will be cut down what I wanted to show you here is um, we have a category up here um, that's called supplies needed as of recently, we have added this section to our posting of the designs on the website. So before you buy, you can look at it and say, uh, I don't have that, or I can't afford that right now, or, oh yeah, I have all those supplies, I can do that, okay? So what you will always find on all of these write-ups is the supplies needed, and then a word about spray adhesive, and a word about tape. It's always the same. Those things you, of course, can skip once you have read through them once. You probably will know what this is all about, and you won't ever have to print those out again. Now, I think you had some other questions, didn't you, Esther? Yes, about the supplies. I see you have fusible fleece. Can I just use batting for that, or do I, does it have you to know, be fusible? You know, you could. You could. But the fusible fleece, this is the adhesive side of the fleece when you are going to be putting your fabric your center fabric on top of it you will have the adhesive side up the fabric here and what then happens is once you're all done you will iron this press this and it will create a fusion between the fabric and the fleece when that happens now when the person who has who has received this as a gift uh, puts this in the washer and dryer that fabric and the fleece will stay together 
when you use batting that is not so. The batting actually might shrink a little more than the fabric and you have a kind of wrinkly looking product. You won't have that if you use the fusible fleece. So I, I know the fusible fleece can be more expensive than batting and some people that's a real issue. So you might just want to decide well I'm going to go ahead and use the batting anyway and that's entirely your choice. I just find to use the fusible fleece gives you a smoother looking product in the end. Okay, another question about the fusible fleece. Do I have to round those corners on there? Oh, that's a really good question. You know what? You don't have to. But I have found that I get nicer looking corners because, you know, when it comes to the corner of the mug rug, there are seam allowances that end up in those corners and that makes it kind of thick there to start out okay. with. Then if you have fleece or batting in that corner as well, that gives makes them look kind of bumpy. And so by yeah. just rounding off the fleece, I have found that you get, again, a nicer looking product. That's a good question, Esther. Okay, the other thing is this embroidery adhesive spray. Now don't most suppliers warn against using that? You know, there are a lot of machine uh, manufacturers that say if you use uh, adhesive spray, we will not warranty your machine. And if, 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 if that's what you were told, you want to be careful, of course, with that. Personally, I like adhesive spray, but first of all, make sure, absolutely sure, that you have one that is meant for embroidery machines. If you don't use the right adhesive spray, you have a problem with your machine, guaranteed. The other thing that you need to uh, be aware of, follow the instructions on your can of spray. Always, always be away from the machine when you spray. You don't ever want to spray where the machine could be exposed to it with you spraying it. Um, also, in in some instances, depending on your respiratory status, you might want to do this outside the spraying. Now for me, that's virtually impossible to, with every little spraying I do to run outside and do this. But for some of you, that might just be absolutely essential to not cause respiratory problems for yourself. Um, and when you do it, a lot of people, including myself, take the hoop like I have it here, and I hold it down into a trash can and I spray into the trash can to prevent uh, the, the least amount of problem. Can you do without adhesive spray? Yes, you can. Um, see this here? Painter's tape. Painter's tape. I use a lot of it. You'll see it all over my projects in the photos. and. Um, the reason is painter's tape holds things down really, really well, but it comes off very easily too. And if the machine travels through the painter's tape, it doesn't leave a lot of residue on the needle, so it doesn't cause problems for your stitching later on. You could use scotch tape, but if, if you travel through that with a needle, you'll find that leaves some residue on the, okay. on the needle. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Mm -hmm. You explain the painter's tape. I see the fabrics that we needed, they're nicely pressed. You always press them and yes. make sure the design is placed the way you Absol want the colors to be. Absolutely. You, wanna, okay. you want everything to be pressed so that you have a nice crisp fabric to place down. Again, if you follow every step carefully that's in the instructions, you'll find that you end up with a very professional looking product. And that makes a difference oftentimes. Pressing your items is a huge difference in a product that looks professional versus one that looks like, oh, you made that, didn't you? Um, so I think maybe one other question you might have has to do with stabilizer. Right, right. I've never used that before. Okay, there are all sorts of stabilizers out there. And oftentimes I use a tear away stabilizer on my on my projects. Mine is pre-cut. This is for the larger hoops. But it tears easily. And so a lot of times that's something I use so I can easily tear it away from the back of the embroidery when I'm done. I do not really recommend that for uh, mug rugs. You can use it for mug rugs, but I prefer to use something called poly mesh. Poly mesh kind of feels soft, oh, yeah. and poly mesh will stay in place, 
and it will kind of blend in with your fabric. It's like almost like you have two layers of fabric in there. Um, when you, it makes a more pliable product. When you use the paper, it makes it a little bit more stiff. And so at first it might actually look better. Um, but what happens is with paper, what do you think happens with paper when you wash it a lot? It would tear, yeah, wrinkle. It tears, wrinkles, disintegrates, and you feel it inside, um, mm -hmm. just as a rough, bumpy kind of thing. So um, for the immediate look, this gives it a nice crisp look, but the problem is once you start washing them, it may not stay so nice and crisp anymore. Okay. Um, I see the first thing you started out with in your instructions is preparing your the backing, backing fabric. Right. And that, when I look through these directions, I want, please go through that carefully okay. because that, it kind of confuses All right. me. We cut two pieces, four and a half by six. Okay, when you have a finished mug work, and let me just grab one here. This is one of our newer ones, Mrs. Evans. When you have the finished mug work, you have this is what it should look like in the end it is fused in the back fused shut back there no hand stitching needed no machine stitching needed it is just fused in the back that makes our mug arcs maybe just a little different a lot of them are fused on the bottom here or hand stitched on the bottom and you will always be able to tell with ours in the back, you everything looks very smooth all around the mug rack. In order to get this fusion to work, you have cut two pieces of fabric, and as I said, they are four and a half by six. This is the six dimension here, okay? And it gets a little confusing because people think, oh, the smaller size needs to be over here in this area. That's not what it is. You are going to create two pieces and you will have them overlap in the back and this way you will end up with eight inches by six inches eventually. Okay, now how do you get there? All right, press your two pieces and then fold, then apply this strip of steamer seam too. All right. When do you apply this? We have this piece over here, four and a half by six. The second piece I folded over by half an inch. And then I applied the steamer seam two, which comes in a box. Half inch strips like this. I like the steamer seam two because it has a little sticky to it. So when you're placing it on the fabric, it will stay there very nicely and easily. And I applied that to the back of the fabric. Okay, so one more time. Fold it half an inch back on the edge. Applied the steamer seam too by pressing it down with an iron. And you can see then I'm left on the top with a piece of paper. Don't peel that off yet, okay? Wait till later. All right, now. Here is the piece that I haven't done much to yet. I take the piece that I folded back and place it over the edge. And I don't know whether you can come up a little bit with a camera to show. Right. See here, yeah. this yeah. edge, this edge of the steamer seam is going to be right flush up against that edge, the raw edge. Okay, and you do the same down here. And in comes my trusty tape. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to tape this down really well here to keep it in place. Now eventually when we are going to be using this, we'll be placing it down on top of the embroidery like so. And we don't want the foot of the machine getting caught underneath here. So we're going to put another piece of tape in the back. And there is your backing. Okay, so we'll place this over to the side. What we have then here are two pieces for the border. We have the center fabric. 
and we have the fusible fleece. Okay. And we have hooped our stabilizer. All right, you think we are ready to go, or did you have any I other think questions? So. No. I okay. think we're ready to. So, move once on. you have loaded your design and you have your um, colors all set up, you will start stitching out the outline of the design. And sometimes that seems confusing too. Why on earth would I be stitching on top of a stabilizer? And that is to give you an outline of where the fabric needs to go. So we will do this right now and we'll be right back, okay? Okay, here we are. We stitched out the outline of the design. And at this point, if you have decided to use adhesive spray, which I have, I hold it down and I give it a light spray. Why do I do that? It holds everything in place. So now I'm going to take my fusible fleece and place it inside here. And it's a little smaller than the outline so that when you have your seam allowances in that other space that's left around it, um, it all won't be too thick. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so we put the fleece in there, adhesive side up. All right, now again, if you didn't want to do that, you could use tape to secure around the sides. Um, I'm going to spray the top of my um, fusible fleece, and now I'm going to place the center fabric over it. And at this point, I am going to use tape again and I'm going to put it on all four sides. You can maybe do some of them. Thank you, Esther. I keep a whole basket full of tape. One must never run out of painter's tape. All right, and your next color stitch out will be the tack down of the fabric and then I believe the quilting stitches. So we'll be back after we've done that, okay? Okay, here we are, um, ready to apply the borders. Now you will find that I put the quilting stitches a bit sooner than you actually see it on the one that's placed for free on the website. Um, so I have the quilting stitches here already and now we need to apply the borders. All right, do you have directional fabric? If you do, like we do here, mm -hmm. it's really important that you make sure you have, when you're done, you have them facing the way you want to. So what I recommend is that you place them down like this and ask yourself, is that what I want it to look like when it's done? And maybe we want it like this. I don't know. Or do you want it like this, Esther? You you pick. Which I like way you like want. that. You I like it like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So just resting like this. Let me hold this up. It's going to be important that you find how you want your fabric to be. All right. Now, once you have them positioned and you think this is what I want it to look like, just take your fabric, turn it down so that the right side is up against the the tack down. The tack which down. Which is what you call the outlining design, right? Right. Actually, the outline was on the stabilizer, and then once you put the fabric on there, you are tacking down the fabric. Okay. And so it. that is called the tack down line. And that's what we are placing these border strips up against. Um, and just turn them down and line them up. Make the top and bottom line up with the center fabric, okay? So the edges are lining up with the center fabric's edges, on the short edges. And now you're going okay. to tape those? And now you tape those. And I have actually found that it stays pretty secure, Esther, if we just put a piece right here. Okay. And then we're going to put it back on the machine and we're going to tack it down. We'll be right back. Okay, we attached the borders 
and we are now going to remove the tape and these border strips have to be of course right side up so I finger press it along here and you might want to do your side and I have found this little iron it's called a wedge iron clover wedge iron is wonderful for these kind of projects it fits perfectly into the five by seven hoops and it Ooh. just gives it that nice little extra uh, crease now another iron that many of you have used for a long time is the mini clover iron and I had one here somewhere this is the mini clover iron that many of you might be familiar with and it has a smaller surface here to go along the edge and it works but this one is just almost like a regular iron as far as strength and heat and everything um, I also use it on the center part and by doing so I already create the adhesion and that will really completely eliminate shifting of fabric when you're when you're stitching okay um okay now this is still hanging loose here and we want to attach a piece of tape to that again and you can reuse pieces of tape if you want to some will stick and others won't so you just have to try okay are we finished with this and we are finished with that and we don't want to get burned no so this is where we are at and we're going to take it back to the machine and we will finish the embroidery we'll be back when the embroidery is on here okay here we are again we finished the design itself in the center and we are now ready to put your backing on remember the two pieces that we joined together we are going to take those and you want to make sure they're going to be facing when you're done they're going to be facing the way you want them to okay all right this is how we want it we're going to turn it right side down on top of the embroidery and matching up the borders with the edge of the backing you see that borders there they end here your backing ends there as well and then the long edges also should be matching up now it's taping time again okay ready with the tape yeah you're faster right here. than me um yep or not right there that's okay. fine and then up on the top and the bottom as well okay. you get the bottom all right Okay, we're going to give it to the machine again and see what it comes up with. Hi, we're back. It's all stitched up. Now it's time to unhoop. And I got that in there really tight. Um, and you will be removing all the stray pieces of tape that are on there before we turn it. Are you anxious to see what it looks like? Yes, I am. <laughs> That's always the big surprise. It's like unwrapping a gift. What will it look like? Don't do anything with the tape that's in between here, okay? Um, there's one more piece here. Okay. All right. We will need to trim the fabric. And I usually go within about a quarter inch. I trim across the corners. Careful not to trim too close at the corners. Um, it's really not a happy moment when you realize you trimmed too close and made a hole in it. Okay. 
Okay. Ready to turn it? Let's see, Esther. The moment of truth. Yes. <laughs> You're going to find out whether you like your choices of fabric or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a piece of tape on the outside here, and you want to get rid of that too. And I use an Afghan needle or a crochet uh, needle, and I like this because it's rounded at the top. When you use a point turner, it's more pointy. And when you're pushing to get the corners out, oftentimes I've found that when I use the point turn, it goes right through. And the crochet needle does not do that. Um, and you have to, of course, push all of those out. And then you realize why it's nice to have rounded corners on the fleece. So you, don't, you get it more easily pushed out. Okay. The last thing that we need to do is remove this strip in the back, the paper strip. Then we're going to take it to the ironing board. And we're going to be fusing these two pieces together. Okay, so let me do that. I'll be right back and then we're just about done. Isn't that exciting? And this is the finished mug rug. Uh, from the back, it's nicely lined up in the back and pressed neatly from the front as well. Let me just say to you that pressing your items is very, very important. If you want a nice looking product that looks like straight out of the shop, that's what you have to do. Pressing is absolutely essential. I like to use spray sizing. And as a matter of fact, as of late, I love this, Esther. Never it's, saw that. It's called Mary Ellen's Best Press. And what I like about this, you know when you use starch or spray sizing, how a lot of times when you iron over it, it leaves like a white a residue. residue? This mm -hmm. leaves no residue. If you use it once over it, it makes it gives it just a nice little body. If you want it stiffer, just use a couple more of this, and it's just really great stuff. You can get it in, by the way, I'm not associated with them. I don't get any money for saying this. Um, I'm just a very happy customer. But this one is linen fresh, and I like that smell, but there's also lavender and plain or whatever, no smell. Uh, but I really like this product and think it, it does a lot for the finished project here. Can you get that from fabric stores or do you, you get it? You know, from you a can grocery? get it online. <coughs> They're big bottles, refill bottles. I have one. I don't ever want to run out of it. Um, and Hancock's Fabrics in the United States has it. But you can buy it on Amazon and uh, okay. online in Best general. Best Press. Mary Ellen's Best Press. Yep. I found that recently. Many of you have probably found it a long time ago, but I'm loving it and I'm really enjoying using it. Okay, that would be it for doing a mug rug. And when you start out with a mug rug, that usually builds your confidence that maybe you can do one of these bigger projects. You know, I need to tell you is I really try to make all of my projects instructions clear enough so that if you really pay attention carefully to the instructions, uh, you should be able to do them even if you just started out. But if you feel I need to build my confidence first, start out with a mug work. We got lots of mug works for you to choose from. See? These are just some of them. I think we have several pages of them, at least, I think close to a hundred different mug works on our website that you could choose from. And um, how about making a little doll for your granddaughter? How about um, making some pot holders for yourself? So many projects to choose from. So please come to Oma's Place, check it out, and see what next project you want to tackle. And we will try to help you. You can always feel free to write us, to call us, and we will be glad to assist you with any problems you might have. Okay? I hope you have enjoyed this, and thank you for watching it.